we started to analyze and we found a few major issues. Uh, we have um, self-maintained indices in the system. So for the ones from the suite, uh, for accounts payable, accounts receivable, um, for general ledger, uh, for material um, ledgers, for cost accounting ledgers. We have redundant data, we call them indices. So they are a projection of what we have in the journal entries. And then we put them using a different uh, primary key and sorted by a primary key. We have a different structure which we use in the programs like accounts receivable, accounts payable, general ledger. And when we, when we and I talk about it already, general ledger, we have a German ledger, a German general ledger, and then we have up to four uh, international general ledgers. And then again, we duplicate, uh, we have duplicate data in form of indices. So they look a little bit different than the normal journal, en journal entries, so we condense them. So the actual table definition is a little bit shorter, but since all tables in SAP are XXXL oversized um, with regards to the definition, um, they're still pretty big. Um, then we looked at the totals, um, and we made, shortly after the project started, the next major um, design decision. Uh, we will go away from the normal, um, the normal setup of systems. We carry only the current version of data in the system. We update the system with every single event, with every single transaction permanently. So we keep the latest stage of data. We change that and say, we don't do this. We keep all changes. We do an insert only approach. And regardless how expensive this is, because it's much more expensive not to have the history. And I will try to prove that point a little bit later with some demos. So we decided we do not update at all. We don't even update the data. We write a new table entry. We don't do any fancy things like we only write the fields which have been changed because one of the ugliest uh, databases we have in SAP or very difficult to handle is our change record, uh, the, 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 the recording of the changes. Actually, I invented this personally in, in R2 when we were forced to have a change log of, of major data in our systems as a legal requirement. Um, nobody is really using the data there. Um, no system is using it, and uh, the users actually are hard-pressed to use it. If somebody wants to know how beautiful this application is going by design, I can't save you, Peter, here. I want you. Uh, look at the change, the display of changes, uh, this generic um, um, framework-based application. It is one of the best pieces of misengineering I have seen so far. Uh, if, you don't try, if, if you don't believe me, just look at it. And if you disagree, write me an email. <laughs> then we will have a, a decent discussion about what user-centric design is. So the users are the only ones who can use it. And unfortunately, it's not very attractive to users. So these are the fundamental pillars. Obviously, the first one uh, that everything of or anything of this uh, what we what we wanted to do um, that anything can work it has to be an in-memory database. Otherwise, there's no chance to be fast enough to forget about our um, our beloved totals. So, no totals, no materialized views, no self-written indices, and no update except update of status variables. These are now in the modern systems uh, mostly timestamps, and they have to be of the nature off and on. So off is hex zero, 
a logical null value, and on means there is a something like a timestamp in which can be interpreted in a as time. <laughs>